Central banks around the world are stacking up on gold. After 10 months of sell-off, gold finally sees the influx of money. Is it a good hedge against inflation? Is it going to double in price next year? And why Bank of America goes long on it in 2023? Let's explore why gold is a good asset to buy now and how to invest in it in 2023. Hi, you're on Gaming Channel. My name is Paulina and I'm sharing what I learned in seven years of investing. The value of gold is derived from its scarcity as a commodity, as well as its long history as a stable medium of exchange. The price of gold tends to rise during economic uncertainty, rate hikes, and inflation. Uh, wait a second, uh, just like what we have now. Goldman Sachs research says that if you look at the behavior of gold in eight cycles of rate hikes during 1970s, you can see that gold rises by an average of 30% in the next two years after the first increase. So that is one of the reasons why Bank of America goes long on it in their recent December's report. Swiss Asia Capital predicts gold to grow to $4,000 per ounce in the first half of 2023. Why? Because they expect the US and other countries to fall into recession. And there is evidence that large institutions are also preparing for this. According to the World Gold Council, central banks bought 400 tons of gold in the third quarter, almost doubling the previous record of what they bought during the same period in 2018. In total, since the beginning of the year, central banks bought 673 tons of gold, updating the maximum of 1967. According to IMF estimates, in October, the official gold reserves of the world's central banks reached the level of 1974. May I show you an interesting chart about 1974? Have a look at the growth after recessions the gray lines there. The demand is also driven by the consumer sector, retail investments in bullions and coins, and record central banks' purchases. However, gold production is actually declining. And this is a high school problem. If the supply is low and the demand is rising, what happens to the price? As you can see in this chart, the price is rising. And as a proof of it, not only you can see in this chart that in previous cycles it was rising, but now here is um, here's a chart of monthly fund flows in gold ETFs. And what you can see here is this circle. This circle is growing inflows since November after nearly 10 months of outflows. Well, so far we have figured out that economic uncertainty drives prices of more stable and reliable physical assets like gold. And you might wonder how much and when you should buy it. Although since 2000s, the annual return on gold in any currency was somewhere from 8% to 10%, and it's much higher than in stocks and bonds, you shouldn't go all in with gold just because it's just a mean of diversification and uh, stabilization of your portfolio because it's a good hedge against inflation and historically it grows during stagflation. Something that is very difficult to predict, but you can prepare for this by buying gold. And in the next part, we are going to explore how to do this. First of all, you can buy gold in physical form. For example, bullions, coins or jewelry. Let's start with gold bars. So you can buy gold from dealers, individuals or online websites such as JM Bullion, the American Precious Metals Exchange or SD Bullion. But what you should keep in mind that how are you going to transport it? Who's going to bear costs of transportation? Where are you going to store all of it? So although it seems like the safest way to invest in gold because you have it physically at your home and like whatever happens somewhere, the market could crash, the banking system may lay down, you have these bars at your home, you're going to swim in it like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> the second way to buy physical gold is by buying gold coins. American Gold Eagle or Canadian Maple Leaf are quite popular collectibles and you can buy that from individuals, from pawn shops, from online sellers. But when buying online, 
Make sure to check uh, producers and sellers in the US means database. However, it sounds better than the gold bars because it's easier to store them, they're smaller. But you also have to keep in mind that gold coins usually have less gold than gold bars. Um, usually producers add alloys such as copper or silver um, just to, to make them more durable or to give some special features, I don't know, color, some other characteristics. So you have to keep in mind that it's not pure gold. The third way to buy physical gold is by buying jewelry. This is probably the easiest one in buying because you can go to the next jewelry store and buy something gold there, or you can buy from individuals, from your friends, but uh, it has the same problem as with gold coins. It's not all gold. It's usually made of alloys with silver, copper, uh, platinum, some other uh, metals for the sake of durability, color, and other characteristics, as I mentioned before. Um, so make sure that you, what you're really buying is uh, what you wanted, and don't forget to ask about these things. So just to sum up, um, the physical buying gold in physical form, you need to keep in mind four things. The first one, where to store it. If with jewelry, it's quite simple, you just buy a jewelry box, then with um, gold bars, it's more difficult. Like you don't buy a gold bar box, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe there is one like this. Uh, but usually owners of gold bars, they uh, give it to the bank, they store it in special depository, but you have to pay for this. And with gold coins, also you have to take a special care so that they don't go bad, they're not damaged, as well as gold bars if you want to store them at home. So the, the, the whole storage thing is quite complicated and requires a lot of effort and investing money in providing special um, storage conditions with it. The second thing to keep in mind is insurance. So you don't want it to be scratched or damaged because that's instantly uh, reflected in the price and it goes down and the the thing kind of loses the whole investment point here. So um, it's a good thing to insure, but again, it's it requires to invest some money in it too. And the whole, you know, yield on gold lowers because of all these costs. The third one is uh, checking manufacturer. You really have to trust the manufacturer. You really have to go um, and check them online or in other databases, some trusted uh, trusted sources, just to make sure that what you're buying is really gold or precious metals. Uh, I'm not saying that this uh, market is uh, full of fraud, but um, you know, if you buy from individual and from not trusted sources, uh, especially for investment um, purposes, that would be really sad to find out in a year that this is not real gold or the, mm, the content of gold is lower than the manufacturer said. So uh, make sure to check these things. And the fourth and the last thing is purity. Uh, old and glitters is not gold. Uh, an interesting fact, a one ounce American gold ego is not pure gold. It only has 91.67% of gold in it. So again, check the purity of your jewelry, especially uh, as well as gold coins and gold bars also come in different uh, carats. But to avoid all this hustle with storage insurance and spending all this money onto something that is supposed to bring you money back, um, you can find a better alternative uh, in investing in gold by buying gold ETFs. Gold ETFs are uh, funds that are tied to gold prices by investing in physical gold or gold companies. Some of the major, some of the leading gold ETFs are iShares Gold Trust, that's the one that I have, Invesco DB Gold Fund, uh, and Franklin Gold and Precious Metals Fund. There are much more of them in the market, so you really need to check with your broker what is available for you. And uh, don't forget that they differ in commission, in the price, and some other extra fees that they charge. So uh, keep this in mind and find something that suits you the best. However, if you want to earn a bit more on gold, you might have a look at gold mining companies ETX. So, or just gold mining companies. Not only um, their 
highly correlated with uh, gold because if the gold prices um, are rising, then naturally these companies make more money uh, and grow too. Uh, but also they pay dividends and also they may, might grow on some corporate news which could give you this extra yield. So just for the sake of diversification, you can think about uh, companies such as Newmont. This is the world's largest uh, uh, gold mining company, which is based in Colorado, or uh, Barrick Gold. It's a Canada-based uh, gold and copper producer, also one of the largest in the world. And if you want to have a little more exposure to precious metals, let's say platinum, you can think about Sibania Steel Water. It is the world's largest producer of platinum, the second world's largest producer uh, of palladium and the third largest producer of gold. However lucrative it sounds to have a gold mining um, companies, ETFs, they consist of hundreds of different companies, most of which you don't know and not all of them are successful. Some of them are closing because their uh, stock is depleted. They're trying to um, find new resources. And as I said, that the, the gold production is declining. So um, instead of investing in just hundreds of uh, gold companies, just because they're gold companies, uh, there is a better alternative uh, when you can invest in just the best uh, companies within this industry that again, provide this extra growth, and it is by buying gold TTFs. TTFs are thematic trading fractional model portfolios made by professionals based on fundamental metrics of the company, based on uh, volatility and uh, potential reward that uh, is possible to expect from this um, or that stock. So this is available in Gamey. You can have a look at the list of these companies uh, in our app, you can download it uh, with the link that I'm just I'm going to leave it in the description. You can invest it in one click again right there in the app. And it also has those largest producers that I've mentioned before. It has Newmont, it has Barrick, it has it also has Kinross Gold. And as you can see in uh, this chart, in the last three months it gained 34 percent which is more than the gold crew. You can check the composition and you can invest in it uh, with the link in the description. And the last question uh, that I'm sure all of you have is when to buy it and how much. And here we have two strategies. The first one is long term and short term strategy. In the long term, it really doesn't matter when to buy gold because it's and a great addition to your portfolio it's going to stabilize it it's going to diversify it if you only have stocks and bonds it's good because you're going to have some physical assets too there it doesn't matter because uh, as we all know time in the market beats time in the market so really just buy it long term and hold it for as long as it's possible. And uh, whenever it's really, really uh, showing you some extra gains, you can sell some of it and buy the deep in other assets. Uh, and then again, just uh, keep, the keep, keep the same proportion of gold in your portfolio. And the short-term strategy is by buying gold in the next quarter. Why? Because Bank of America experts say the market typically bottoms six months before the end of recession. So why in the first half, based on our economist's forecast on the recession, ending by the third quarter of 2023? So if you already have gold in your portfolio, but you also want to play along market trends, this short-term gold rush trend, um, Bank of America experts say that maybe buying uh, in the first half of 2023 would be a great idea. But again, it's not an investment recommendation. It's for educational purposes only. If you have any further questions about investing in gold, why buying it, why it's a good hedge against inflation or some other things, um, let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching uh, this video on Gainy channel. Subscribe and see you next time.